to set down for consideration. Are there any bills for introduction? There are no bills for introduction. The House then comes to questions for oral answer. And the first question stands the name of Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, does he agree with National Bank Chief Economist Cameron Bagri that we are not seeing an export-led recovery and increased activity in spending-centric sectors such as housing is not the stuff of a durable, long-term, sustainable upswing. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, uh, not exactly. Uh, I think it's a bit soon to jump to conclusions about uh, how far the New Zealand economy can rebalance. It took a long time to become too much dominated by consumption and debt and it's going to take a while to uh, turn into a more strongly export-driven economy. Uh, I'd certainly share with um, the chief economist uh, the concern that a continued high exchange rate makes it harder for our exporters to grow at the speed that will successfully rebalance the economy. Dr Russell Norman. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, does he believe that he has taken sufficient measures to rebalance the economy given that New Zealand has been running current account deficits at a time of record export prices, meaning that despite earning more than ever for what we're selling offshore, we are still not paying our way in the world? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, we think we've taken uh, sufficient... We, we think we've taken considered and balanced measures uh, to push the economy in the right direction. We could, of course, taken much more dramatic measures, uh, say, for instance, balancing the government's budget you know, a couple of years ago by making widespread cuts. Uh, but we, we, we proceeded to borrow and increase government spending in a way that uh, makes it a bit harder to rebalance the economy, but that's what was required Order. in the Order middle I, of a deep recession. I apologise to the Minister, but this question was asked by the leader of the Green Party. We're getting unacceptable interjection from members of the Labour Party that are making it hard to hear the Minister's answer, and he's not being particularly provocative. He's giving a, uh, appeared to me to be giving a thoughtful answer to the question asked. I'd ask members to be more reasonable, please. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Has he seen Treasury's forecast for the current account deficit deteriorating over the next three years to 6.9 per cent of GDP by 2015? And does he think that if these projections come to fruition, that that will be successful management of the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I think that governments for the last 30 years have found it difficult to manage the current account deficit because if you could manage it directly, uh, then you would make it uh, much smaller than it is. Uh, that's one of the challenges in New Zealand. Uh, it happens. We, we believe we're making have been making decisions and will continue to do so uh, that will improve our savings and export performance over time, and that is likely, uh, but not guaranteed, to improve the current account deficit. I happen to be a bit more optimistic than the Treasury forecasts about where we'll get to because I see significant changes in New Zealanders' behaviour around their understanding of what the economy needs for growth, which is exports, not debt, and their own personal decisions around savings. Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what has the government done to shift spending into the tradable sector? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, uh, among a number of things, we have changed the balance of the tax system, so there's higher taxes on consumption and property speculation and less tax on work and saving. Uh, we're working hard on the productivity of government, uh, which uses a lot of resources, uh, more than it should for the output that it achieves. Uh, we've curbed spending increases in government, and we've also focused strongly on the competitiveness of our export businesses, trying to uh, help them uh, manage their costs down and help invest in their innovation so they can perform better. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is he not concerned that this economic recovery looks disturbingly similar to previous economic recoveries, which are focused on retail, housing and consumer spending, rather than exports and import substitution? and that after four years we're still seeing a recovery which looks disturbingly like the previous ten years of the New Zealand economy. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, no, Mr Speaker, I'm not overly concerned about that. I think things that would 
uh, would be of concern would be, for instance, if uh, credit growth and borrowing uh, took off, and there's, there's no sign of that. Uh, but the member, uh, I'm pleased the member's concerned about that balance because uh, too much, a lot of our discussion um, around his policy proposals and others uh, are all focused on the fact that they want the government to spend more and they want to stop meaningful export activities such as the oil and gas sector uh, or dairy farming, which are critical, uh, both of them, to New Zealand's future export success. So if the member wants to support a rebalanced economy, he should support those things, not oppose them. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree with the Reserve Bank Governor that the high exchange rate is stopping the rebalancing of the New Zealand economy, and what kind of measures will he take in order to lower the level and the volatility of the New Zealand exchange rate? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I do agree with the Reserve Bank Governor on that point. Uh, the measures the Government is taking is to, con is to uh, influence those things we can influence. We can't actually set the level of the exchange rate. If we could, then we would just drop it 10 cents tomorrow. Uh, but we're focusing on the competitiveness of our exporters, so making sure they've got uh, the benefit of good infrastructure, uh, a skilled workforce, uh, sensible uh, regulation and cost from central and local government. Dr. Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, has he read the Statistics New Zealand latest business operations survey, which show that 46% of export businesses surveyed rate the high and highly volatile exchange rate as the single biggest impediment to export growth? And shouldn't that be the central focus of government economic policy ahead of those other measures? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised it's only 46%. I would have thought it would be more, actually. Uh, I mean, the, the government focuses on those things that can influence. Um, to actually have a direct impact on the exchange rate, you need to have a couple of hundred billion US dollars in the bank, and we don't. We actually owe uh, hundreds of billions, and it helps if you're not a democracy. That's a feature of those countries which do directly manage their exchange rates. That's not where we are. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the Finance Minister seen the measures taken by the United States, the United Kingdom, in terms of quantitative easing, which have had a significant downward pressure on their currencies, and the even quite unorthodox measures taken by the Swiss Central Bank, um, which have all had downward pressure on their currencies and have helped their tradable sector? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I think you would describe uh, the measures taken by uh, the uh, UK and US central banks as emergency measures. Uh, if they w were fortunate enough to be in the situation of the New Zealand economy, uh, they wouldn't be doing uh, quantitative easing or money printing because that is, while it solves some shorter term problems, it's storing up longer term problems uh, for those economies which will require further difficult adjustments which will, might well take 10 years to, to get through. We don't have to do that. We're able to get moderate growth in this economy without resorting to those uh, emergency measures. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Isn't the Finance Minister saying that we will continue with orthodox economic policies, which according to Treasury's projections will result in a 6.9 per cent current account deficit in 2015, and if we go down that path, we will have no option but to borrow more and to sell more assets in order to meet that current account deficit. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, we will continue with policies that uh, are focused on improving performance where, where it matters, and that is in um, terms of savings, both private household savings and government savings, and both of those are going to continue to improve quite significantly over the next few years and in improving export performance. And I'd look forward to the member's support, particularly on the export side, where I would hope that he could get behind measures which will help the competitiveness and the sustainability of our uh, biological production industries, of our oil and gas industry, because more jobs and more growth and more investment will come from the success of those industries. And the member is, and his party are known for opposing not only their expansion, but the existence of those industries. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister agree that one of the most important measures that could be taken would be to drive more capital into the productive sector? 
and that's why we've been proposing a capital gains tax, amongst other measures. And then, in fact, what we've seen over recent years is that lending into the housing sector has increased, while lending into the business sector has actually declined. The Honourable Bill English. Well, um, as we've, Mr. Speaker, as we've dis as this matter has been discussed a number of times uh, in the House before, uh, the government considered the option of a uh, capital gains tax, and both the tax working group, in fact, every tax working group that has looked at it, and this government decided that, on balance, um, while there are some merits in the idea, it wasn't the best uh, best policy decision. Uh, we believe the measures we took in the 2010 budget regarding uh, taxation of property uh, will lead to collecting around about two and a half billion more tax from that sector, and that is going to have a longer term um, effect in reallocating capital uh, into the export sector. Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In light of Treasury's projections that under current policy settings the current account deficit will deteriorate to 6.9 per cent of GDP by 2015, isn't he concerned that his government is simply repeating the same mistakes of the previous Labor government where we allowed high and growing current account deficit, doing nothing as our external debt grew and standing by while, while another housing asset bubble forms and isn't it time we change direction or we will just have to keep building up debt and selling, up as selling off assets to finance the current account deficit? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, we're certainly making uh, progress in that respect because a current account deficit, even at the 6 per cent, would be considerably lower than what it was three or four years ago, whether it was 8 per cent uh, for a number of years, and that uh, certainly was... Um, an imbalance in the economy. I mean, in the shorter term, there will be pressure on the current account because of the rebuild of Canterbury, which has an extensive imported component, uh, and because business investment intentions are now at the highest they've been for five years. So our businesses are gearing up to import more uh, machinery and services to improve their productivity and output. So, uh, th but in the long run, we believe that the change of behaviour of New Zealanders and their attitudes to savings and a more competitive export sector, a much more competitive export sector, will assist in closing that current account deficit to sustainable levels, which are probably somewhere around 3 to 4 per cent. The Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Doesn't the Minister realise that a near-zero budget, projections of decreasing export earnings and rising net international liabilities to the end of the projection period a proof of his government's failure to properly rebalance the economy. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, as we've been discussing here, uh, we accept, certainly uh, agree with the view that the economy has not yet successfully rebalanced, and there are some headwinds to achieving that as we move away from being a debt-funded, consumption-driven economy to being a savings-driven, export-driven economy. And that is going to take... Uh, going to take some time, particularly when we've had a recession and a major earthquake along the way. But we believe we're making progress, and the fact that the fact that we are likely to grow faster than the UK, the US, Canada, and all of Europe, and about the same speed as Australia, is an indication we're probably on the right track. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, given that the biggest problem our exporters face is, as the IMF has said, a grossly inflated dollar by about 20 per cent in the IMF's case, they have said. Does he intend to go on just making sympathetic noises and doing nothing? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the question with the exchange rate is, uh, is what measures the government could take to have an impact. Now, we could swap to a whole bunch of disastrous policies and that would collapse the exchange rate. We don't intend to do that. The Honourable David Parker. How can the Minister say that his plan is working when all the projections show exports dropping, the current account deficit and net international liabilities getting worse? And it is, is it his intention or the Prime Minister's intention to give another pre-budget speech next week, this time entitled sticking to a plan that's not working? The Honourable Bill English. Speaker, no. Uh, but I will be giving speeches saying there's no way we'll adopt the Labor Party's silly plans. Question number two, Jacinda Ardern. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Tertiary Education.